Hey Posh Arts, it's Simone here, and I am super excited to talk to you guys today about our topic for the night. So we are going to be talking about vendor events, um, but I do want to point out for anyone that is watching this live um, or catching up on this really soon after the, the live recording, that we do have something brand new that just barely, barely, barely was announced. Um, I just posted it in the team page, so I hope you guys are seeing all the collateral that is available. Are doing parties with a purpose to help um, all of the all those in Houston that are affected by Hurricane Harvey right now. So um, please, please take a look at um, what what Posh is doing and see how you can also um, use this as a way to um, as as a way to help even more. So five Posh is donating five percent of all sales um, the 29th through 31st. Um, to the Red Cross. The American Red Cross is obviously providing relief efforts for the Hurricane Harvey, um, for Hurricane Harvey, uh, uh, those affected by Hurricane Harvey. So if you guys have a chance, um, pretty, please, please, for like start a party just for yourself, reach out to people, let people know that they can host a party themselves, um, and all sales will go toward um, the Hurricane Harvey, or 5% of all the sales toward the, uh, uh, now through the end of the month, 29th through the end of the month, we'll go toward um, helping those affected by Hurricane Harvey. This is a huge deal. Posh has never done anything like this before. I personally will be offering some of my personal commission as well. So this is going to be a really great way for you to help out uh, and lend a helping hand best you can. So spread the word, okay? So be sure to check out the collateral for that if you guys have not yet. Um, but okay. So let's get into tonight's topic. So I wanted to kind of touch base on that really quick. So um, just because it was just barely released and I wanted to make sure that you guys saw it. Um, but let's talk about vendor events and how to get the most out of vendor events. Okay. So if you guys are watching this after the fact and you guys are like, you know, the Hurricane Harvey thing, you know, like if it's already past the parties with a purpose thing, then um, here is the meat of the training. So vendor events obviously are um, boutiques or um, mixers, vent like you basically where there are multi Multiple vendors in one place as a vendor event. That's what I categorize as a vendor event. Okay, so it's a little different, obviously, from a home party because usually home parties is like you, right? So you're the only vendor, or maybe you're doing it with you know one to two other vendors. But for the most part, it's not. Um, it's a very close, warm circle group of people, right? Um, vendor events are a really great way for you to break outside of your warm circle and to dip into your cold market, right? So if you guys um, want to get into vendor events, then I would highly recommend checking out all the different trainings that are already available on vendor events. Um, check out previous trainings that I've done for our team as well. Um, but I want to focus specifically on how you can get the most out of vendor events, especially as we get into fourth quarter, as we get into kind of vendor, this is event season for Christmas, right? For the holidays. And this is the time of gift giving. This is when people are, um, wanting to shop. This is one, you know, pe the businesses are, you know, make or break for businesses to survive for the rest of the year. So take a, take um, that into consideration as you are prepping for your vendor event. Okay. You can find vendor events just about, um, just, it depends locally where you go for a vendor event, but things I do recommend, um, well, I mean, go to look for a vendor event, but things I recommend that you, um, Keep in mind when you are looking, researching, and booking vendor events is to um, ask questions. Make sure you know a few details about the vendor event. Um, is it the first time they've done it? How many times have they done it? What kind of advertising or marketing do they plan on doing? Um, how many people are expected? That kind of stuff, right? So you kind of know um, the market that they're reaching so you know whether or not it's going to be a good idea for you. Vendor events are investments. They're not something that you're going to, um, you don't go into it usually to make back your vendor fee because um, just because of where we are in our business, it's not necessarily, um, and, and the hit or miss nature of vendor events, you really don't know. So you have to go into a vendor event um, knowing that you are investing your time and your energy into this for future, okay, for cold market leads and for the future gains, basically. Um, you're not going to 
necessarily see that vendor fee come back to you um, through that event. You might see it come back to you in different ways, like um, if you're following up with people you met there, um, whether people are booking parties, whether you find a potential new team member, um, this is potential ways for you to make back that vendor fee. They are not there, they are not, um, yeah, they're not there, you're not gonna, don't go into it thinking you're gonna earn a bunch of money, okay? Um, so, um, I don't want you guys to feel like discouraged either, um, but I do want you guys to be aware that um, if you go into it knowing that you are knowing what your goals are, um, which is you know to get leads, to go to dip into your cold market, um, to find you know new people and like new you know new people that have never tried posh before, then you're going to come out so much, um, come out so much, I guess. More po it's going to be more positive on the other side of the vendor event, okay? Now, um, vendor events take a lot of preparation as well. So in order to get all out of your vendor event, there is a lot of prep work and there's a lot of, um, I guess, post work. Um, so there's things that you're going to be doing before the vendor event. Things that you're going to be doing before the vendor event is deciding how you're going to do it, right? So deciding what your display is going to look like. You want it to be enticing. You um, decide how you're going to take down information, contact information. I personally love giveaway slips because I feel like it's a very easy way for people to do it. Um, it doesn't matter if it's a big event or a small event. I always have giveaway slips. Um, even if it's a small event and there are like two people like you know, entering the giveaway, that's better than nothing. And I like having it there because if I need to get in contact with somebody, then I have a slip for each individual person. So if somebody says, hey, you know, I heard about this thing called a stripper, you know, I uh, and, and I want to try it, like is there a way I can get a sample? And perhaps I don't have a sample sticker there or sam sample of the stripper there, then I sometimes will be, you know, you know what, I can send it to you, you know, fill this out and I will get one out to you. Okay, or something like that. Or if someone wants to order something that I don't have on hand, I'm like, fill this out, and um, I will, you know, get that ordered and sent to you or delivered to you. Okay, so then I will take. I basically these slips are like life. <laughs> Make sure you bring pens. I always forget pens. But um, decide how you're going to take information down. Okay. Um, decide how you're going to run the event, right? So um, things to prep for are obviously some uh, what you're going to be displaying. So your display needs to look enticing and clean, I think. Um, it doesn't have to be busy. It doesn't have to be full or anything like that. Get creative. Use, like, boxes um, and and different levels to to gain, to gain garner interest, to, to pull the eye in, to pull people into your booth, you know? Um, balloons if you're if the uh the the event um venue allows it something just anything that kind of gets people's attention is totally fine you don't need a full table or booth um whatsoever and something else is you don't necessarily need cash and carry depends on your market depends on what your budget is but do not think that you cannot do a vendor event because you do not have any cash and carry or don't think that you can't be successful because you don't have enough cash and carry, whatever that means to you, okay? So I personally, usually, um, I will have cash and carry, but that's my market. My market is a very cash and carry heavy market, um, but I don't have as heavy, heavy of cash and carry as you might think. My inventory, inventory is usually quite low, and I do that on purpose because I don't want to go in the hole. You don't want to be bonus buying. You want to get product that you know you can sell. Okay, stuff that if your vendor event for whatever reason, like there's a freak snowstorm and nobody comes, that's okay. You know, then you are able to sell this product. You're not going to be, you know, stuck, I guess, with extra product. So I tend to invest in um, cash and carry that I know I can move. <laughs> okay, so it sounds like, I don't know, super, I don't know, but it's a strategic. Um, I, 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 and that's what I decide to do. If you decide not to do cash and carry or you are not in the place to do so, that is okay. Um, use the testers. Use whatever testers that you have. Um, use your starter kit. Test, turn all the products that you have in your starter kit into testers and use that as a way for people to try out the products. So you need to have some sort of testers, some sort of product for people to try. Otherwise, 
your product isn't going to sell. Right. Yeah. Jamie, this, that's what Jamie's saying. Your display must have testers, but doesn't need to have product sell. Yeah, for sure. Um, and if you have products to sell, you must have a tester for it. Um, if it's a hand cream or skin stick, I think it's, um, for hand creams, I say yes. For skin sticks, I think it depends on the skin stick. Um, you don't necessarily need to have all of them open, um, especially if, at least in my personal experience, um, especially because um, you don't want to have like six skin sticks out because it's overkill a little bit. It's kind of like, um, there's like a, I don't know who said this, like a Chanel quote or whatever, is like, you, you know, you, you get ready for the day, like your outfit, your accessories, and then you take one thing off before you leave the house, okay? And I can't remember who said this or what quote exactly it is, but I've always loved that because I feel like when you're setting up a vendor display, as a consultant, you're super excited and you want to put out everything. Well, you have to have this mask and this mask and this, this hand cream and all of them, like, you know, but then you take a step back, okay? You have to take a step back after you're done and then be like, oh my gosh, is that too much? And then start taking things away. Well, do I need like five citrus hand creams out? Probably not. So I'll pull back a couple, you know. Do I need to have every detoxing mask out? Probably not. I will pull a few of those back, right? Less is definitely more. You don't want to overwhelm your customers. There's a total psychological thing where if you there are too many options, people become paralyzed, like, and they don't decide. They can't decide. You know, it's just too overwhelming. So you don't want them to get to that point where they just are so overwhelmed by the options that they walk away, okay? So like I said, yes, so testers are important. Even if it's just one hand cream um, and your tester kit or your starter kit or whatever, um, sorry, your starter kit, um, that is completely fine. You guys don't need to like go all out on every single thing. Um, and then if you do have product to sell, yeah, it's really good to have some testers. Um, but so you don't need to have one of every single thing, okay? Um, like if you tend to talk about hand creams and soaps all the stinking time, then focus on those products. Don't, 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 don't purchase body butters if you're never going to discuss them. Okay. You can have a tester out if you happen to have a tester. I'm going to let people know that they can place an order for it, but it's not something you need to have for cash and carry. Okay. Um, uh, Jamie, that's a good advice. So she says have a focal point. Um, and, and Jamie's actually, so this, I talk about this in like every event training or vendor event training, whatever, but Jamie and I do completely different vendor events. So Jamie's always, Jamie has gone to where she is by having no inventory at vendor events while um, I've mostly done cash and carry just because of the market that I'm in. Both of us have been able to succeed and have had successful events and it really just, it just depends, right? It depends on how you run it. Um, but I love having, yeah, so having a focal point means you're going to focus on some products. This is something that a lot of us do specifically so, well, it's easier for us um, to talk about the products, to have cash and carry, to have testers, etc. cetera. Um, but it's also very simple for the customers because if someone is brand new to Perfectly Posh, which a lot of people are, they don't need to know about everything. They don't need to see all of the hair, foot, uh, skin stick. Like, they don't need to see every single thing. They just need to try something that will kind of get them a little, like their entry to posh, right? Their gateway to posh. And with and the focus that a lot of us, the thing that we focus on a lot of, a lot of the time is the posh to meet you set. The posh to meet you set is designed specifically for people to um, try out posh compare it to what they currently have and see the difference, feel the difference. Um, the posh to meet you set is a chunk bar, a hand cream, and a lip balm. It's very easy. It's three items, right, and for a one, one, one price. And so it's very easy to, to do with a large event or a small event, and you don't, it's not overkill. People, you know, it's a very easy way for people to try it out. Now, our fizzy bath bombs are brand new this season, right? And that is what I'm, that is one thing I'm very excited to include in my future vendor events is because I think that it's genius. They can, cause like, okay. So one thing I love about having chunks um, for vendor events is that chunks, uh, you can smell most of them pretty well through the paper, through the wrapping. So not only are they a tester, now they're cash and carry. So if all you have is one 
feel better soon and somebody wants it, done. You they that there you go. You have a test jerk, you have your cash and carry, you've sold it. Perfect, right? So I love having that. And I feel like the fizzies are another thing where you can smell them. They are tangible. People can touch and play and you know, they like to look through things, but they can mix and match and make their own sets, which is even like it's just so fun. It's very interactive. It's a really great value. Um, so I, I'm excited to have posh to meet you sets and fizzies for my vendor events. And I know that like, like Jamie's excited. Jamie's doing that as well. Like a lot of people are loving it. And I think that, um, even if you have like one fizzy set, you know, or if you buy one flat and just trade it with locals, there are, there's a lot of different things you can do with it. You can individually wrap them so that they're ready to go, stick a cute tag on it and it's ready to go. Or you let people mix and match to make their own sets, right? So it's a very fun way um, for people to just talk and to interact and engage with one another at your at your vendor event. Um, yeah, so no one is gonna try out a face mask or foot products at a vendor event, save those for home parties for sure. So typically I will not actually, I won't even put testers out. I might put a tester out for cackle spackle just because I love talking about cackle spackle, um, but that's it. And I actually don't even carry any foot products. Um, for cash to carry because I don't, I just don't, I don't, I don't, I don't talk about them very often. So it's not, it doesn't, it's not something that would make sense for my business to um, include them in my cash and carry. Um, also, Jamie, a good recommendation is to stock up on the retired chunks for four to six dollars. Um, you can sell them for nine retail because they are at retail. So if they sell out and they're not available online anymore, you just, you can't sell them over retail but the retail is nine, so you can include them into your posh to meet you kits, um, to posh to meet you sets. So another way to kind of get a big bang for your buck, or you can have like a clearance section. If nine is a little bit too high for your area for a chunk bar, then you can have like a special, you know, introduction price or something like that. Get creative with it, right? Um, okay, so that's that's the prep work of the cash and carry and the testers and all that fun stuff, right? Um, and display, okay. Okay, so you've kind of laid the groundwork for your vendor event, right? Now you're at the vendor event. Now, how do you like get the most out of the vendor event when you're there? Okay, regardless of whether there are a lot of people, a few people, or no people, you want to talk to people, okay? You want to um, be friendly and step outside your comfort zone, say hi to people, invite them into your booth, ask them if they would like to try a hand cream, ask them what their favorite scents are, let them know, um, you know, have you heard of Perfectly Posh or would you like to try a hand cream or, you know, or a non-greasy hand cream, something like that. Just talk to people because if you're sitting at your table, like if you're sitting behind your table facing everybody, I don't know how many people are like going to feel comfortable coming up to you. Um, I personally feel super weird if I just come up to somebody who's just sitting at the table and I'm like, hello, and then, you know, like it's super weird. You want to be welcoming and you want to, um, if you're not that typically that kind of person, practice it. It's, just, it's really not as scary as you might think. Um, if they don't hear you, if they walk past, if they say, no, it's okay, it's not a big deal, just move on to the next person, right? You want to make sure that you're reaching out to people because if you're just sitting there waiting for people to come to you, then you're not going to get the most out of that event because a lot of people haven't heard about per Perfectly Posh. So what would make them even walk up to your booth? You know, there's not enough brand recognition reg recognition right now for people to do that. Um, so you got to, you have to do that. So you have to reach out to people. I would highly recommend talking to other vendors also um, because you guys can help each other out. Watch each other's tables um, when you go to the bathroom or um, just network and get to know the other vendors. Um, it, sometimes vendors are super awesome. You know, most of the time they're super awesome and they will help you. They'll be like, okay, well, this event was good and this event was good. And they're going to help you. Um, I guess, find future events, right? Um, so definitely network, definitely talk to people. Um, uh, when I first started out, I actually, when I did a lot of the smaller vendor events, I used to pass out samples to every, all the vendors. And it was just like a, hey, you know, have, you know, this is for you, you know, for you to try when you get home, you know, to pamper yourself when you get home after this long day. And if you guys know me, I'm a total introvert. And it was so super weird for me to like pass out samples to people I didn't know but I didn't I was just like hey this is for you and it's not uncommon for vendors to 
give each other stuff, right? Um, some vendors will offer vendor discounts to different to other uh, fellow vendors um, and stuff like that. So it's not super weird. Um, so if you feel weird about it, um, just be aware that it's not that weird. But it was something that I was like, oh, I don't know. But turns out, you know what you're doing is you're spreading the brand. You're spreading the posh brand. And maybe someone will think of you when they are putting together their own event or if they're looking for a posh consultant or something like that, right? Um, or you might find a vendor that tried posh at a previous event that's like, hey, I tried that thing and, or tried something, or that, that sample you gave me at the last event, or a sample somebody gave me at the last event, I loved it, do you have like more info about it? Or something like that. Like this has happened before, this is actual conversation that has happened before because of the spreading the brand awareness. Like we said, we're all a tribe, right? We're a posh team, and like every single one of us, and we're all out there to spread the posh love, right? So it really is um, a really great way to kind of go about it. Okay, so that's what you're doing at the vendor event. Don't forget you're taking contacts. Um, uh, jot notes down for the different people you're talking to. So if they fill out a giveaway slip, then I would write down, hey, this is what they tried, this is what they liked. Like this person also is obsessed with Sassy Uma like I am. Or this person is looking for some stuff for dry skin. Or this person um, loved, you know, they had a couple kids that absolutely loved this hand cream. Um, and the giveaway slips are super fun be or super... I guess helpful and useful because they also have more information about it. So you can tell as they're filling it out, you can tell them, Hey, we actually do spa nights or girls nights. So if you guys are interested, you know, that's a super fun way to try the different things. Like we actually do mask parties or, uh, you know, stuff like that. Right. Um, and you can kind of talk about that. You can talk about the business opportunity. It's a really great way for you to kind of break, kind of get out there and talk to people. Um, and if people are expressing interest in any of those things, I do recommend that you get them on the calendar now, even if it's just for a tentative date, which I say, hey, you know, can we get you, you know, if you want to, if you're like, oh, you're interested in that, like, let's, you know, how, like, let's do, let's get you down the calendar, you know, like, for just even for a tentative date, you know, and like, you know, and I'll give you, you can give them a deluxe sample pack for doing that today, or you can give them a prize at their party for keeping their date, something like that. So there's an incentive for them to do it then. Um, I usually like to say that this helps both of us out because um, I have them there, I have my calendar there, and it helps me out to have everything scheduled now. So I don't have to, they don't have to find me, I don't have to find them, we know what's going on, right? So that is one way to do it, okay? If you do have people interested in learning more about the business or anything like that, um, having like team building packets, like pink packets and, you know, recruiting packets on hand is also super helpful. Make sure that, you you know, you can set up a follow-up time to, to talk to these people um, once they kind of get a chance to look through everything, you know? Um, so there's a lot, like, a, but this is prep work, right? You needed to have these things beforehand. Um, one thing I did not mention is I do not hand samples out freely at vendor events. Okay, if they want to try something, they can try it at my table. I don't just pass out samples. I actually did do this when I first started, and I really didn't get any anything from it, so I stopped doing it. Um, I feel like a lot of what I passed out just ended up at the bottom of a bag um, and then just tossed. So I don't think that you need to pass out samples at a vendor event. I feel like if they are there and they want to try something, then they can try it there. If they want to try something that's you know, not available to try, then obviously gauge their interest and you can offer to send or deliver it to them or something like that, right? But usually it's not as that big of a deal, okay? Now, so that was a very specific, um, I guess, what the only things I have available is like I label everything. So I have things passed out, I have my business cards. Um, recruiting packets to have on hand is amazing as well. Um, if you can go, if you are, you can go above and beyond and even get hostess packets available for anyone that books um, something then, which I do recommend to have because even if it's just a small packet of info um, and some samples for them to try so that they get a little bit more familiar with Posh, that is a great first step to host this coaching. This isn't the last time that you're gonna be talking with them. You're gonna you know, perhaps drop off more um, 
it depends. It depends on how you want to do it. You can give them a full hostess packet with some order forms and stuff like that and some samples that they can pass out or you can, you know, meet up with them later. So there's a lot of different ways you can do it. But yeah, there is prep work involved, okay? Um, if this is overwhelming to anybody, you don't have to do like everything. Just make sure you're talking to people and, and contacting or not contacting, collecting leads, okay? Now, after your vendor event, this is the thing that I feel like a lot of people overlook and sometimes isn't discussed as much. Um, but this is like where um, you're going to get the most out of your vendor event. Where, well, this is another way to take advantage of all the things that like all the, the time and the money and energy that you've invested in your vendor event. Um, you have to go through the follow up. You have to um, go through your contact lead lists. Um, contact le your leads and figure out what to do with them. Sort them by interest. Put them in an email newsletter. Email them. Let them know. Thank you so much for visiting my booth at the whatever vendor event. Um, you know, you know, follow up. Hey, you did not win the giveaway, but I am offering a free girls' night for up to ten people. Or, um, <sighs> I don't know. Thank you for entering my giveaway. You did not. You know, like. Here, I would, I'd love to send you a deluxe sample pack. I don't know, like, there's a lot of different ways you can do this, but basically follow-up is so important and, and so key. Vendor events are very, very draining. Even if you're doing one day, it your adrenaline is going, and there's so much stuff, but then you kind of, like, when you're done, you're like, oh, my gosh, and you're tired, and you, you want to be done, but then you have to remember that you need to follow up, and you need to follow up in a timely manner. You cannot wait, like, a week later and then contact these people. You have to do it within, I think, 48 hours is what the recommended time is. They are going to remember you then. It's going to be fresh in their minds then. Um, so if you wait too long, then your leads might have just gone cold, you know, so it's not – not as useful if people are like, what? That thing that you're talking about? Oh, yeah. Mm, I changed my mind. Or I don't remember what you're talking about. Like, I don't remember how much I liked it or something like that, right? So follow-up is really, 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 really important. Um, so something that I, I personally do and I would recommend that you guys do is when you are booking or looking for a vendor event, factor in the time to prep and to follow up when setting the date because if you are somebody if you are like just going oh well I'm open every weekend let's book something every weekend when are you prepping and when are you following up are you going to be so burned out that you won't be able to keep up with all of the all of that or are you going to be able to follow you know some sort of system so that you can follow up right um don't you know, make sure that you factor in that time. It's really important that you guys do that um, because otherwise it's kind of lost. It's wasted. Like I said, we don't go into vendor events um, with the intention to make money like right away. So if you guys aren't taking the time to prep and taking the time to follow up, then it's kind of a waste. It's kind of a bad investment if you're not going to follow through. Okay. Um, does anyone have any questions or anything to add? Okay, I kind of blabbed oh, for a little bit. So, all right. Okay, uh, if you guys do have questions on anything specific, um, feel free to leave a comment. I would love to answer them. Um, we, I do have other videos on vendor events, um, kind of like, you know, what to bring, the cash and carry. I like to say, you know, a little bit different aspects of vendor events. So be sure to look for those as well. Um, and like I said, if you guys do have any questions, leave, feel free to leave a comment, reach out to your sponsor, reach out to your premier, upline, whatever. Um, the team page is a really great resource as well because a lot of us have done vendor events and we, everyone does it in a different way. So um, I'd love to see how you guys are doing it, what you guys are thinking, and you know how, how, how well things are going for you. Um, okay, if you guys have any questions, let me know, and just as a reminder, be sure to check out the parties for a purpose because it's a really great cause, and I want to make sure that everyone takes advantage of that um, so that we can help um, all the all those affected by Hurricane Harvey. Okay, so I will talk to you guys later. Have a wonderful evening, and um, yeah, have a great end of month.